The time is starting to run out for teams to qualify for the Euros next summer. And with match day seven and eight upon us, it's time to go over each group and show you which matchups you should keep your eyes on in the next five days. Guys, Manny G back here with you on Football with Flags. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get to it. Starting off with Group A as we begin with Scotland, who have maintained perfect form thus far through qualifying with five wins out of five matches played. That is put to the test, though, this time against Spain. They did beat them 2-0 back in March, but obviously Spain no, trying to keep that gap away from Norway, also who sit in third at the moment. This is a huge game for them at home. Scotland can afford to take a loss as well, even if they drop points in this one. They've still got a comfortable lead there at the top of the table. As for Norway, they did beat Cyprus in their opening fixture 3-1 to one earlier this year, but they need a big result this time around as well. While goal differential probably won't come into play for them down the stretch, an opportunity to collect three points and keep the pressure on Spain is very important. Keep in mind as well, Norway and Spain will take on one another in their second game for this window later this week. Before we start off with the leaders in Group B, wanted to give a quick shout out to Ireland who have played incredibly tough and well uh, throughout the qualifying process thus far. Just not had the results to show for it, but they've put up some uh, really good performances against these difficult sides that they've had to face. Uh, they'll get another opportunity against Greece, though. They did lose to them 2-1 to one earlier this year as Ireland were down to 10 men late in that game. However, this is a very important game for Greece if they're able to win this one. And I'll tell you why. As Netherlands go up against France, they're looking for revenge as they lost to the French 4-0 uh, back in March. France scoring three goals inside the first 21 minutes. Uh, but the big reason why, as you can see there, Netherlands and Greece tied on points Greece actually having a nod in goal differential at the moment, but if Greece are able to beat Ireland for the second time and Netherlands are unable to uh, collect a point or take a win away from the French, that will make things very interesting as Greece hosts Netherlands for their second game in this window. Keep in mind, Netherlands beat Greece 3-0 back in September, but obviously that will shape things up very differently for these two sides in terms of how they go against each other tactically and uh, strategically wise against one another. Uh, having said, if Greece are able to beat Ireland and uh, the Dutch are unable to find any points against France. A lot of tension still in Group C, especially for that second place spot. It seems England have taken care of business and should be able to wrap things up throughout their remaining games to take the top spot, sitting with 13 points at the moment. They do host Italy uh, here in this window. They did beat them 2-1 to one, uh, earlier this year, despite a red card from Luke Shaw late in that game. We're able to hang on. Uh, I still feel like England should be able to get the job done. At worst, maybe just a point in this game. As for Italy, this is huge. Uh, if they're able to come up with three points somehow against the three lines, we'll have to wait and see. As for Ukraine and Macedonia, it was a wild game between these two earlier this year. Macedonia had a 2-0 lead before Ukraine comes storming back in the second half to win 3-2 in that one. Uh, of course, Ukraine being at home will hopefully help out. But again, Macedonia needing a big result there. As you can see, all of these three teams sitting on seven points right now. Goal differential could come into play. And keep in mind, Italy are the only team of those three uh, battling for that second place spot at the moment that are at least assured a playoff spot if they don't directly qualify. Uh, but keep in mind, too, Ukraine and Italy each have a shot at Malta. Uh, for their second game in this window, which could be huge, not only for their points, but goal differential as well. As you can see, Malta down at the bottom, uh, yet to collect a point in any of their games thus far with a negative 10 goal differential as well. It's still all to play for in Group D, but Croatia and Turkey sit in the top two spots. Keep in mind, they are the only two in this group assured a playoff spot if they don't directly qualify. So Armenia and Wales have to do everything they can to try and get into those top two spots here with their remaining games. Remember, Armenia at one time were at the top of this table before Croatia and Turkey have hit some good form. Wales really struggled at the beginning. They finally bounced back and put themselves at least in the conversation. Uh, but we'll get started off with Croatia and Turkey who meet first. Uh, Croatia won this fixture 2-0 back in March. As for Armenia and Latvia, Armenia really need a big win. Hopefully them being at home will help out with that. Uh, they've got a decent goal differential right now, but would love to help push that up uh, along with their point total. As for Turkey and Latvia, very exciting game between these two last time out. Latvia at home 
Uh, Turkey would win that game 3-2, but two goals in extra time. It took one from Turkey uh, late, I think, in the 95th minute to secure a victory there. Uh, obviously, Turkey hoping that they don't have to go through that type of mess once again, especially if they can at least pull out a result against Croatia. If not, uh, they could be sitting in a dangerous spot going into that game against Latvia. As for Wales, it's going to be tough. They're at least at home against Croatia. Uh, and one of their fixtures through this window. But really, I think all eyes are on Wales. Can they come up with a result? Can they at least pick up a point in this game? Uh, I think it's going to be incredibly difficult. I feel like Croatia will be able to get the job done and win this one. Uh, but for Wales, really, I think a lot riding on this fixture uh, and, and to determine whether they're able to qualify or not. Now on to Group E, where Albania still sits at the top of this table, but they take on Czechia, formerly known as Czech Republic. These two met back in September. It was a 1-1 draw, but keep in mind, Albania only had one shot in that entire game. Obviously, I think being at home will help them out. It'll be a tough environment to play for Czech. Uh, but again, th we'll have to wait and see if Albania are able to create more chances in this 90 minutes than they were the last time these two played. Uh, of course, for Czechia, this is a huge chance to try and uh, push themselves up the table. They do have Faroe Islands waiting in the wings as their second game in this window, but obviously would love to get everything they can against Albania first to try and help push them up, knowing that Moldova and Poland are sitting just underneath them. Credit to Moldova for continuing to stay in this conversation. I still don't think that they'll qualify at the end of this, uh, but really they put on some very good performances uh, in a wide open group, to be honest with you. As for Poland, obviously they have struggled mightily through their first five games, but they have a huge chance uh, in this next window with Faroe Islands coming up and then a second game at home against Moldova uh, could be huge for their chances. If they can secure six points through these next two games, that could really shoot them up the table uh, with an opportunity to directly qualify uh, for next summer. Now on to Group F, where it's really a two-horse race at the moment between Belgium and Austria. Sweden sitting in third, just trying to cling on to anything they possibly can. Austria and Belgium will meet for the second time in this table. They tied their first fixture 1-1, and to be honest, for Sweden, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen in this second fixture. I think they really need one of these two sides to beat the other one if they want to have any chance of trying to uh, grab second place, because if they draw once again, that's just an extra point that they're going to have to make up, and they're they are running out of time fast. Sweden have a game against Belgium on the road. Keep in mind, Belgium, though, beat Sweden back in March 3-0. It's going to be a very difficult result to overcome, especially on the road, considering the poor form that Sweden have been through their first five games. But they're still in it, but they have to have wins throughout the rest of this qualifying process. They can't afford to drop points anymore. Uh, the rest of the way. And again, I think that's why they need a winner and a loser in that opening game between Austria and Belgium. Keep in mind, though, Austria do have a fixture against Azerbaijan to close out this window later this week. Uh, if for some reason, Austria do lose to Belgium in that opening game through this window. That's a huge boost to hopefully get them back in the conversation and stay away from Sweden uh, in their final game to hope, hopefully secure direct qualification. As for Group G, Montenegro sit in third, still hoping for an opportunity to directly qualify, but it's an uphill battle for sure. Hungary and Serbia, though, take on one another to open up this window. Keep in mind, Hungary did beat Serbia back in September 2-1. to one. Again, I think for Montenegro, kind of a similar situation, but a little bit better for them in their circumstances other than Sweden. I uh, would love to see a winner and a loser between that Hungary and Serbia game, just so that way, hopefully, they've got a good opportunity to try and catch them a little bit easier. Montenegro, though, start off their window against Serbia uh, on the road later this week, which is going to be pivotal for them to try and make up some points. Uh, they currently have zero in terms of their goal differential, but they've played very well, I think, so far. I still don't think that they'll directly qualify, but I've got to give them a lot of credit considering that this is a group. It's fairly wide open, but Hungary and Serbia have obviously been difficult teams to play against, and we know that they can put up some good performances against top teams around the world as well. Uh, so, again, we'll have to wait and see what comes of it if Montenegro has any opportunity to try and catch the two of them. Uh, but keep in mind as well, Hungary do have a matchup against Lithuania later in this week that could really help propel them back up into one of those top two spots if for some reason that they slip and lose to Serbia in this opening game and Montenegro are able to take down Serbia later in the week. 
As for Group H, honestly, my favorite group in this entire qualification process thus far. It has been unbelievable to watch these teams battle it out. Unfortunately for San Marino, they've just really been a punching bag down there at the bottom. Pretty similar story for Northern Ireland. They've at least competed a little bit better uh, and could obviously play spoiler still uh, with these other four teams remaining that sit atop of them. But just look at that table. Slovenia and Denmark each sitting on 13 points. Finland and Kazakhstan just below them uh, with 12. Three of them have a plus seven goal differential with Kazakhstan sitting at plus four. Remember, Kazakhstan was at one point at the top of this table. Uh, before the last window, I believe. But again, just so many storylines, things you could talk about with these fixtures. I'll just go ahead and put them up on the screen for you. Uh, but it's just really awesome to see because keep in mind, while Denmark have been you know, in the spotlight recently, they've had some good performances in major competitions. Uh, obviously, the last Euros that we had, the great run they had in the semifinals. Uh, I still think that they'll directly qualify. But keep in mind, the other three teams that we're talking about here, Slovenia, have not been involved in a major competition since the 2010 World Cup. Finland have never qualified for the Euros up until the last edition uh, in 2021. So they are looking to try and get back for the second time. They did get bumped out in the group stage, but they played incredibly well in that group stage and almost had a chance to make it to the round of 16. And as for Kazakhstan, they've never qualified for a major tournament, as we've mentioned before in previous videos. This is a huge chance for them. I think they're still in a good spot, but they do have two difficult games on the road against Denmark and Finland coming up. Guys, just keep an eye on this group. Keep an eye on these fixtures because a lot in these next two games for all of these teams are going to help dictate who's able to directly qualify and if anyone even has a shot at potentially going to a playoff. But again, uh, just give a round of applause to each and every one of these teams. It's been a phenomenal group to watch and they've really put on a spectacular show. Now on to Group I, the next to last table to talk about, we've got Switzerland and Romania sitting at the top, and they've pretty much been there almost this entire time. I really don't have any concerns about Switzerland. I think they'll get the job done. They've got a game against Belarus coming up, but Belarus do have to take on Romania first in their opening game through this window. Uh, so again, two very difficult games for Belarus with the two uh, top teams in this group, uh, but really a great opportunity for both of these two sides, Switzerland and Romania, to continue to try and stay ahead of Israel, who have a game against Kosovo on the road later this week. Obviously, some tough times for those players. I'm sure that they're going through a lot, uh, but if they are able to come out with a win somehow uh, for their country, that would be huge, as they do at least have an assured spot in the playoff Israel if they don't directly qualify. But again, they have put on the pressure with Switzerland and Romania. They've played very well, I think, so far through their first six games. A really good opportunity for them against Kosovo. But keep in mind, too, Romania also have a game against Moldova, excuse me, Andorra, uh, later this week as well that could really help benefit them. As you can see, Andorra at the bottom of the table uh, with just two points through their first six games. Last group to talk about with Group J, and really not a whole lot to mention as Portugal have really dominated things thus far. Six wins out of six games, a plus 24 goal differential. Uh, I think Slovakia might be able to take a draw away from them. However, I don't see them uh, being able to secure three points. I think Portugal uh, still control this group, should win it in the end. I think Slovakia, though, still qualified directly. We'll have to see if Luxembourg have anything for them here in their final few games. A uh, good chance on the road against Iceland, who have really been super disappointing in these qualifiers thus far, uh, as well as Bosnia, too. Um, just really thought that both of these sides would at least put on some better performances, at least sit higher up in the table. Uh, but again, take nothing away from Luxembourg. They've done very well uh, to be sitting in third with, not, uh, excuse me, 10 points, even though they have a negative nine goal differential. Uh, after their game against Iceland, though, they do take on Slovakia at home, which could be huge, especially if Portugal are able to beat Slovakia and Luxembourg are able to find a way to beat Iceland in uh, their first game in this window. Uh, both of these teams could be tied on points. Obviously, probably a huge difference still in goal differential, but if they're tied on points going into that game, keep that in mind later this week. Guys, as always, thanks again so much for watching. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already done so, we certainly encourage you to do so as we continue to try and grow this thing. Uh, we've got a lot more coming your way. Can't wait to see how this unfolds as we start to set the field for the Euros next summer and a lot more going on in the international game as well. So guys, make sure you stay tuned for all of that. Hope you all have a blessed day and we will see you soon. Peace.